There is a word from the Lord. So if you have your Bibles, turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 3 through 13. Y'all, this is going to bless us. If you, if you listen carefully, this is going to bless us um, because I believe God has a word um, for this house specifically. Amen. And for all of us who are looking for God to do something crazy in this season. Um, this, is, this word blessed me. When God showed me this text, um, I said, oh, my God. Um, because a lot of us are looking for something, for God to do something extraordinary in this season. And watch this, y'all. What we want God to do is, is strictly connected to our giving. Okay, y'all ain't going to talk. This side didn't catch it. Um, anybody on this side, I need y'all to understand that what God is trying to do in this season, it depends on your mindset and how you begin to release gifts in the kingdom. Here it is, y'all. It's in 2 Corinthians. Watch this. Um, beginning at verse 9. Listen very carefully. Reading from the New Living Translation. But I am sending these brothers to be sure you really are ready. How many of y'all ready for the next season? Y'all. But in the text, y'all, Paul says, he, watch this, he says, I'm sending these brothers to be sure you really are ready. As I have been telling them and that your money is all collected. I don't want to be wrong in my boasting about you. We would be embarrassed, not to mention your own embarrassment, if some Macedonian believers came with me and found that you weren't ready after all I had told them. Good God Almighty. This text couldn't have come at a more perfect time. In this season, y'all, after coming through a building project, in this season, after watching God do some extraordinary stuff that we didn't think that we were going to be able to do. Listen to this text, y'all. He says, some Macedonian believers came with me and found that you weren't ready. He says, after all I had told them, so I thought that I should send these brothers ahead of me to make sure the gift you promised is ready. Can you look at somebody at the crib and say, do you still got that gift you promised? Yeah. Supernatural, they're giving around the corner. Can you look at somebody and somebody else and tell them, do you still have the gift that you promised? Listen to this, y'all. He says, to make sure the gift you promised is ready, but I want, to be, I, I want it to be a willing gift and not one giving grudgingly. Remember this. Yolanda, a farmer, God Almighty, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop, but the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. You must each decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly, Hakika, or in response to pressure. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. Watch this, Ricardo. And God will generously, watch this, God Almighty. And God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need. And plenty left over to share with others. Do me a favor, y'all. Do me a favor, just nudge somebody that's vaccinated and say, I want the overflow. I want, I, I want, I want everything he got for me. Can, can, come on, tell somebody, I want the plenty left over. I don't want God just to meet my needs, but I want the overflow. Watch this. Verse 9 says, as the scriptures say, they share freely and give generously to the poor. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. For God is the one who provides seed for the farmer and then bread to eat. In the same way, he will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. Yes, you will be enriched in every way so that you can always be generous. And when we take your gifts to those who need them, good God, am I watch this? They will thank God. Can you look at somebody and tell them they don't need to thank me? They, they don't need to thank me. They need to thank God because if it weren't for God, I wouldn't have had it to give to them. Watch this, verse 12. So two things will result from this ministry of giving. Watch this, Sister Faye. The needs of believers in Jerusalem, in the Mount Virginia Beach, in the city of Virginia, in the 757 will be met. 
and they will joyfully express their thanks to God. As a result of your ministry at the Mount Virginia Beach, good God Almighty, they will give glory to God. For your generosity to them and to all believers will prove that you are obedient to the good news of Christ. God Almighty. I want to preach from the subject. Ready for the next season. Ready for the next season. Father, I pray that you would release preaching power. Use me in this moment, God, to preach your word. God, we thank you in advance for how our lives shall be the better. For what shall happen through this moment. God, we give you the praise and we give you the honor because we believe that faith comes by hearing. And hearing by your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. If I can get just a little bit in the monitors. One of the things that we all deal with as people is seasons changing. Last week, we could wear shorts. Today we have on turtlenecks and wearing coats. A few weeks ago we lost an hour of sleep because we had to spring forward because the seasons were once again changing. Changing to prepare us for a warmer climate and more daylight. When the seasons change, it shifts us from one season to the next. Changes our mindset, the way we flow, the way we move. And if the truth be told, no matter what season we are in, there are times when we all get to the point when we are ready for the next season. In the wintertime, Big Sean, we enjoy the cold weather because we can dress a little more. We can wear our nice coats, our dopest sweaters, and we can match them to some fresh Timberlands with, with the hat that coordinates with the outfit. Even when the season is about to shift and it becomes sweatsuit weather. Evan, and we can put on and we can break out the Adidas and, and we can break out the Nike and the Polo sweatsuits. And if we hold on just a little while, somewhere in the beginning of March time frame, we, we have to change the clocks, Lady T. Push time ahead an hour and do what is called spring forward spring forward out of the last season and into a new season from one dimension into the next dimension and what i found out is that god does the same thing with us as believers you and i go through seasons in the spirit where god does his works in us and through us and we all go through seasons in our spiritual journey sometimes it's fall in our lives when we have to experience the darkness longer than we want to us season when it seems like nothing will go right problem after problem situation after situation darkness is all around us and all we want is for the season to change so we can some see some daylight so we can get ahead for once instead of being behind can i get somebody to talk to me in the winter time y'all is so cold that we can't move like we want to the air is cold the house is cold people are cold and yes some bedrooms are cold too y'all ain't gonna preach with me this morning and all we desire is for the seasons to change so that we can once again experience warmth experience the joy of the lord peace that surpasses all understanding the security that only god can provide and the reality is many of us are ready for the next season well god told me to stop by the mount at virginia beach this morning to tell somebody that it's been winter time in our lives for long enough we've been in the struggle for long enough look at somebody and tell them it's time to spring forward in the spirit is there anybody in here somebody online that is tired of being where you are tired of being stuck in this season that won't give you any peace tired of being stuck in a season where your relationships are broken tired of being stuck in a season where your finances have you choking in debt somebody in Hempstead somebody in Tampa Florida somebody in Alabama I'm going to shoot your boy some hearts. Put it in the chat and declare I'm ready for the next season. Do me a favor and shove somebody in the house. Tell them I've been getting prepared.
prepared for a long time. I've been faithful through this last season and I'm ready for this season to change when God is going to release breakthrough. I'm ready for this next season when God is going to set my house in order. I'm ready for this next season when God is going to make me the head and not the tail. When God is going to make me the first and not the last. When God is going to make me the lender and not the borrower. When God will walk in the manifested blessing and God will begin to do things I ain't never seen before. Is there anybody that will declare, I am ready for the next season. I'm ready for the next season. There are times when we aren't ready for the next season because we struggle to be obedient in our giving. But when such times occur, according to this text, we have to be obedient and give joyfully. Now, it's crazy, Big Sean, because in this season, to get to the next season, you wouldn't think that I would be sitting up here talking about the fact that it is directly connected to your stewardship. Because we really believe, y'all, that if we just do right, if we just serve right, if we do all these things, that God is going to release some stuff for us. But in this text, Serene, God showed me some crazy stuff. He showed me that this church at Corinth, Paul was dealing with them about the fact that God wanted to take them to new levels and new seasons, but he could not do it because they had not gotten ready yet. Because the text says, y'all, he says, I wanted to see if y'all were really ready. And that thing resonated with me, Charlene, because when he said that, it helped me to understand that God is checking on all believers in this season because while we were in COVID, many of us got relaxed in our giving. Many of us got relaxed relaxed in our serving and many of us got relaxed in watching worship some of us were watching on Tuesday morning some of us might not watch it at all but how many of y'all know that Sunday is the day that we set aside to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ but watch this champ God showed me in this season that he is trying to do something very different for all of us in our lives and God wants us to understand that it's not just connected to your service but it's connected to your giving God Almighty Watch this. He says, I wanted to make sure that you were really ready for this next season. Now, the question is, how many of us believers are really ready for the next season? One of the things, Sean, that I remember is when I used to play basketball, and when I used to play basketball under Coach Lasseter at Indian River, he would look at every player, and he would look them in the eyes, and he would go down the line, and he would look in their eyes, and he would say, you ain't ready, push off. Then he would look at the next guy. He would say, you ain't ready. Push off. Then he'd look at the next guy. And he'd say, oh, you ready. You get right here. Then he'd say, oh, you ready. You get right here. And right now, y'all, they got this little song that they sing in the college ranks now with the young boys. And they come out and they say, we ready. We ready. We ready for y'all. I want to ask some believers this morning. How many of y'all are ready for what God is trying to do in this next season? Do I have anybody that will stand on your feet and declare, I'm ready for whatever God wants to do in this season. I'm ready to get out of debt. I'm ready to get new relationships. I'm ready for that new job. I'm ready for that new promotion. I'm ready to go to the next season. I'm ready to go to the next level. Do I have anybody out there this morning that will declare, I'm ready for the next season? But Sean, in this text, he puts it to the point where we have to understand that it's directly connected to our giving. And what God wants us to understand is that he is trying to do something new in this season, but it's directly connected to how we respond in our giving. And watch this, y'all. The problem with some of us in this season is that we don't recognize that God is trying to shift. In fact, some of us have missed the last two years because God has been trying to get you to respond differently all this time. Because before COVID, y'all, we were living our lives to the point where we were doing things that were not connecting and not lining up with the kingdom. And God said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give y'all two years to get this thing right. He says, I'm going to get y'all two years because after this two years, I'm going to take you into a new season. But I'm going to ask you after the two years, are you ready? Can you do me a favor? Just look at somebody beside and say, are you ready? 
uh, are you ready for what God is trying to do? Because if you're not ready, I'm going to need you to slide over a little bit. If you're not ready, you can't walk with me because how can two walk together except they agree? I need somebody in my corner, somebody next to me that's ready for the next season. If you're ready for the next season, you can't be stingy in this season. You got to be willing to give so that God can use what you got to bless somebody else. Do I have anybody in here that will declare God ain't trying to bless you just for you God is trying to bless you for the kingdom God is trying to bless you so that others can know that there is a God somewhere do I have anybody out there that will declare I need somebody that will declare I'm ready to do whatever God calls me to do to be ready for the next season he says watch this Sean he says y'all promised a gift he says, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send some brothers ahead of me because I don't want to come prematurely. I don't want to come and y'all not ready. He says, so I'm going to send some brothers just to make sure y'all ready. And so y'all, God told me to come by Mount Virginia Beach. He told me to show up wherever you are. Him stay at New York, Tampa, Florida, wherever you might be online. He says, I need you to go by this morning. And he says, I need you to do a checkup. He says, I'm sending you before I show up to do what I'm going to do. He says, Teron, go and make sure they're ready before I show up. Good God. Watch this. He said, Paul says, he says, I'm showing up and I'm going to make sure that y'all are ready before I get there. I'm going to send these brothers ahead. And what that did for me, y'all, he said, God says, he says, I want to make sure sure y'all ready. He says, so I ain't going to embarrass you right away. He says, I'm going to make sure you get another chance. He says, because I could have showed up. He says, but I'm going to send some brothers ahead to tell you the truth. I'm going to send some brothers ahead so that you understand I'm on my way. Do I have anybody that will just look at somebody and say, you better get ready if you ain't ready. If you ain't ready, you better get ready. If you're not ready, you better get ready because he's on his way for change. Watch this, y'all. He showed me a couple of things and I'm going to leave with y'all this morning. He is telling them that if they get this thing right, that they're about to step into a season of favor and overflow. How many of y'all want overflow in this season? How, how many of y'all are just tired of getting by? How, how many of y'all know that when, yeah, we know God is a provider, but how many of y'all know that it do still pinch a little at the gas pump now? You, It still pump. It, it just hit different when you got to get a late $100 bill and don't get no change. It, it hits different now when, when you take her $80 and say, I used to get $65, but now she tell you, you just gone on because it's going to take it all. But anybody glad that God is still a, a healer and a deliverer and he can still provide? Watch this, y'all. He is telling them, if we get this thing right, we're going to walk in the favor. So, Hakika, the first thing I got to leave us with is, watch this. The first thing that happens is, if we're ready for the next season, if we're going to get ready, we got to understand magnified witness. Okay. Magnified witness. Let me break it down for you. Watch this. It's in verses 3 and 4. He says, he says, I am sending these brothers to be sure you all are ready. And watch this. As I have been telling them. And that their money or your money is all collected. I don't want to be wrong in my boasting about your giving. How we respond in our giving becomes a witness that reaches the masses. And watch this y'all. How we give in this season. It motivates others to give. Y'all ain't catching that. You know, I know when you're talking about money, you know, it's hard to get some people to give you some amens. But but watch this, y'all. We went on our first our first ride for the year, Ricky. We went on our first ride for the year in the Dismal Swamp. So we went and did our little 16 miles. But but in the middle of our 16 miles, we stopped for a break. We stopped for a break, Evan, and when we stopped, we had just hit the eight-mile mark. And there was this little old um, Caucasian couple standing over there by the side of their bikes. And y'all, they were standing there, and we just, you know, hey, how y'all doing? You know, we trying to catch our breath. We trying to get it right because, you know, we hadn't rolled all year long. And here we are on our first ride. We ain't thinking about church. We just thinking about breathing. We ain't thinking about money. We just thinking about surviving the next eight miles. We ain't thinking about nothing but getting through this ride. But then this Caucasian couple starts to talk to us. And he says, and, he, and when, while we're dialoguing, then he says, I, I take it y'all are believers. And, and we said, yes, sir. He said, as a matter of fact, I heard one of them call you pastor. I said, yes, sir. He said, what church you go to? 
Then he started asking for my information. He said, well, every now and then, y'all, we have a call every week. And, and we, 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 we call everybody and we start to pray together. He says, can I get your phone number so I can get you on our call and we pray together? I said, well, look at this here. Because how many brothers step to you like that and just want to connect with you, don't even know your name? And watch this, y'all. The spirit of giving is everywhere. So, so he walks up to me, and then he says, he says, I need, he said, we go to that church. He said, we've been to some other churches, Sean. He said, we've been to some other churches that we just didn't feel good in. He says, but now we go to the church over there on Great Bridge Boulevard that you can see from the interstate. And I said, yeah, I know that church. That church is that huge church that they just built a big old edifice behind it he said yeah that's my church he said my church watch this he said that's my church and we love to give at our church he says as a matter of fact when we finished the building project we didn't owe one dime he said because the people in our church understands that when you give to the Lord God will give back to you so we dare not go into the house of God and let the house of God have bills because when we give God is trying to do something and he's trying to magnify our witness because when you ride down the interstate on 464 it is a grand witness to what the Lord can do do I have anybody out there that understands that God wants to magnify the witness of the kingdom through your gift Crystal, you better tell somebody that when you give, God will open up some doors. When you give, it becomes a magnified witness that everybody can see that what God is trying to do is give you freedom through your giving. It becomes a magnified witness. Paul says, watch this, he says, he says, I want to make sure y'all ready because I dare not take the people from Macedonia and bring them to y'all and y'all ain't ready with the gift. He says, in other words, why would I bring them to a place where y'all claim this God is so amazing but y'all can't even pay the bills? Why would I bring them to a place where y'all say God is a healer, he's a way maker but y'all won't even give? He says, no, let me make sure y'all ready. Get your gift right. And he says, watch this. It becomes a magnified witness of who God is. And watch this. He says it motivates them to give. That's why I love Matthew 5 and 16. In the same way, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. That's why I love 2 Timothy 2 and 15. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. Titus 2 and 7 declares, in everything set them an example by doing what is good in your teaching and show integrity and seriousness you got to understand that we become a magnified witness for the kingdom when we give now watch this y'all the other thing that happened y'all we went to the we went to Olive Garden um, the other day we get in the Olive Garden watch this Hakika and so we're sitting there the service was pitiful when I tell you it was pitiful it was pitiful we got our appetizers then the brother forgot everything else then when it came out it was all wrong and when it came out they had to take it back and it was taking so long that we just told them man just take it off the bill we don't want it no more just you know go ahead and charge us for what we ate we ate your little salad we ate your little cheese sticks but we're not paying for them and, it, and the brother came over y'all and he says I'm so sorry he says I'm sorry because I'm still in training. This, 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 this Messiah job, he says, I'm in the military. He was clean cut. He had his hair cut on. He was a real nice guy. And so he says, so he says, I wish I could pay for your meal because I messed up. We said, no, brother, don't you worry about that. And so watch this, y'all. Sister Faye went on and took care of the check and she, she put a tip on it. And he looked at the tip and he says, my. He says, as bad as I was today. He said, you still giving me a tip. So I went in my pocket, y'all, and I pulled another $20 bill out. And I said, come here, my brother, and I smacked it in his hands. And then he looked at his hands and said, what is this for? I did a poor job today. I said, brother, it's because God loves us and he loves you too. And he said, watch this. He 
say, didn't I hear one of them say you was a pastor? He said, where your church at? He said, because as soon as I get the chance, I'm coming over there to a church that will help somebody to explain. Just because somebody got a bad day don't mean that God don't want them to be blessed. Do I have anybody out there today that'll declare I become a magnified witness when I give and stand? We become a magnified witness, Ricardo. This young brother said, oh my God, I messed up and I still got blessed. How many of y'all are glad that God still looks beyond our faults? And he still sees to our knees. You better online better give God some praise right there. Because as messed up as we are, he still pays the bills. As messed up as we are, you still got heat. As messed up as we are, your children are still good. Now watch this. I'm running out of time, but watch this. Point two is, if we're going to be ready for the next season, we got to understand that we have to be a motivated participant. We have to be a motivated participant. Watch this. The text says in verse 5, So I thought I would send these brothers ahead to make sure the gift you promised is ready. God has called us to participate in his process of prosperous living. Watch this. So watch this. Giving not only exposes our heart, but it exposes our integrity. Many of us make promises to God when we want him to move. But break promises when he wants us to move. Okay, okay, some of y'all acting like y'all been saved all your life. How many of y'all have ever said, Lord, if you get me out of this, Lord, I promise you. But watch this. In the process of becoming who God wants us to be, our heart to give is challenged so God can see who we really are. In this season, y'all, God wants to do more. He's expecting more out of us. But I promise you, if you're ready for the next season, we're going to be at a point where we give and we don't give grudgingly. We participate, God Almighty. We participate with motivation. Y'all, I love when I, when I look online and I see that I've gotten paid. Because when I see that I've gotten paid, y'all know the first thing I do? It ain't to see which shoes I'm going to get. The first thing I do is I calculate what my tithe is. And then I go ahead and write that tithe check because I know that if I go ahead and do that, I know that everything behind it going to get blessed. Y'all y'all ain't going to talk to me. I'm a motivated participant because I've seen what God will do for those of us who trust him and do what he's told us to do. How many of y'all know that God gives us the tenth? He says, I want you to be a steward over the tenth just to see what you're going to do. I give you 100 and I just ask for the tenth back. But watch this, Crystal. He says, if you're ready for the next season, you will give willingly and you will be a participant that helps everybody around you to give. But let's not be too long, y'all. Watch this. I'm going to go ahead and get through it. Watch this. That's why I love Proverbs 3 and 27. Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in your power to do it. That's why I love Proverbs 11 and 25. Whoever brings blessing will be enriched and one who waters will himself be watered. God Almighty. That's why I love Psalm 37 and 4. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Is there anybody in here, anybody online that will stand on your feet and make the devil mad and declare, devil not only am I going to give but I'm going to give with a cheerful heart. Is there anybody that's made up in your mind devil you ain't gonna stop me from giving because when I look back over my life there were times when I didn't know how I was gonna make it and God made a way when I look back over my life there was times when they should have came and got my car but God made a way do I have anybody that will declare I'm a willing participant because I serve a God so watch this I gotta understand that I got to be I got to be a motivated participant. But then thirdly, Lady T, watch this. I got to understand that if I'm ready for the next season, one of the rewards of being ready for the next season is I get merit overflow. Y'all ain't, ain't ready for this. Y'all ain't ready for this. Watch this. When we are ready for the next season, God will release merit overflow. Marcia, watch this. It's in verses 8 through 12. And God will generously provide all you need. He says, if you're ready. 
if you give what you promised him you'll give. He says, and watch this, there will be plenty left over to share with others. As the scriptures say, they share freely and give generously to the poor. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. When we walk in a spirit of generosity, God then in turn gives us plenty to live on and to share. In other words, God doesn't just give us enough for ourselves, but he gives us enough for the homeless guy on the corner. He gives us enough to be a blessing to your mother and your father. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. When we operate with the spirit of generosity, it merits the overflow of God. He said, if I won't open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, when God begins to pour out his blessing, he doesn't sprinkle because a sprinkle can miss something. When God begins to pour out his blessing, he doesn't throw it at you. He pours it over you so that no area of your life will go untouched. When we come to the understanding, that God is the one who provides the seed for the farmer and then the bread to eat in the same way he will provide for us and watch this increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you can you look at somebody and tell them can you look at somebody and tell them then all your needs gonna be met then all your needs going to be met. When you begin to give, every need that you have is going to be met. And watch this. God going to give you overflow. Do I have anybody in here that's ready for overflow? How many of y'all ready to write a check and not have to watch your balance that day? How many of y'all ready to just start going to the store and say, I want that one and I want that one. I want overflow when I give generously. God will bless me with overflow. But watch this. I got to get out of here. Luke 6 38 says given it shall be given unto you good measure pressed down shaken together and running over shall men put into your bosom for the same measure that you use it shall be measured back unto you but lastly lady team we out we got to catch this plane in a few minutes watch this the last thing is if we're going to be ready for the next season we got to understand magnetize praise it's in verse 13. He says, as a result of your ministry of giving. Sean, isn't it crazy to believe that because of your ministry of giving, that it can result in magnetized praise? Watch this. Somebody online, somebody in the sanctuary, ask somebody in the crib, what are you doing? Somebody on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, somebody type in the chat, say giving is a ministry. Good God from Zion. Watch it. Paul says, as a result of your ministry, they will give glory to God for your generosity to them and to all believers. We'll watch this. Prove that you are obedient to the good news of Christ. And they will pray for you with deep affection because of the overflowing grace God has given to you. Watch this. When we give, we show evidence to the world that the overflowing grace of God it's on you. It's on you. I saw this thing on Facebook. This is my last example, and then I'm out. Watch this, Laverne. I was watching this thing on Facebook, and this woman was at the gas pump. Guy walks up to her. He has money rolled up in a note. He gives it to her, and he walks off. And the note said, this is just to remind you that God ain't forgot about you. God loves you. She opens it up and sees the money. She bows her head and she says, oh my God. But then she sees another young lady at another gas pump. Evidently, Lady T, she said, I'm, I'm blessed already. I don't need much more. So, so I'm going to make sure I bless somebody else. I'm going to pay it for her. So she walked over to the next pump and she gave it to the little girl and she walked away from the little black girl. It was a little, it was a you know, Caucasian lady that had it first. But then she walks over to the little black girl sitting in her car and it looked like the little black girl was saying, Man, I'm about to pay for this gas. How am I going to do something else? But she looks over and she walks over and she reaches into the girl's car and she puts it in her lap and she gives it to the girl. The girl opens the note and 
And after she finished reading the note, she started looking for the lady again. And then she just bawled and cried. Because watch this. What must have happened was that it came in a time when she really needed it. And she didn't understand how she was going to make it. She must have been praying, Lord, I need you to do something right now in this season that's going to give me the ability to make it. And watch this. God will send somebody your way to bless you and when you least expect it. Anybody ever been blessed like that, that God will open up some doors and people will come from everywhere it will prompt somebody do i have anybody that understands that when i begin to worship god folk around we will give god worship do i have any worshipers in the house that won't let me worship by myself because when i think of the goodness of jesus and all he's done for me my soul gets happy and i'd have to declare that we serve a good god now watch this in this season if you're in the sanctuary you can rest on your feet in this season my brother my sister God is trying to see if we're ready he gave us two years in a pandemic for us to get our minds right for us to get to the place where we begin to give freely where we give generously so he can give us overflow God has got us in this season y'all watch this two years and now we're coming out of the pandemic and I can hear God say lady T are you ready are you ready for what I'm trying to do in your life Sean overflow coming if you just keep on giving overflow is coming if we stay obedient to what God is trying to do in this season Mount Virginia Beach I'm so grateful for the opportunity to lead this great body of believers and I just believe that God is trying to push us to a place in this season where we're ready for the next season and the overflow that he wants to give us my prayer is that we be so visible on this corner that we begin to change lives in the city of Virginia Beach like it's never been seen before. I believe that this whole block is supposed to be the Mount Virginia Beach. I believe that when it's all said and done, there's not gonna be another hungry person in this city because of what God is gonna do through the Mount Virginia Beach. I believe that the gangbangers are gonna have to move out because the Mount Virginia Beach is gonna begin to move through this city like never before. My prayer is that God increases us to the point where we leave a mark that cannot be erased. And Lady T, he told me, it's connected to your giving. So on Supernatural Day of Giving, y'all, this is going to be crazy. Because I believe that we've motivated some people today that understands that when we give, it gives us the tools change lives.